This module on object-oriented design describes the role of design activities in the development of object-oriented systems. It describes the relationship between design activities and other parts of the development process. It outlines a variety of issues that are faced in designing the system from the point of view of the architectural views which you've already learned about in other modules. It describes in some detail the techniques and mechanisms used for implementing the kind of requirements that you're likely to encounter in the development of object-oriented systems. The early part of the module describes what object-oriented design is, its purpose and motivation, and the relationship between object-oriented design activities and the fundamentals of object-oriented system engineering. The session on requirements describes the kinds of information which you're likely to receive as a result of object-oriented analysis activities and the relationship between those requirements which describe the external perspective on the behaviour of the required system and the design information which is required to be generated about the implementation of the whole system. The following sessions on logical issues, processing issues, deployment issues and external issues are organised along the lines of the multiple views of the architecture of the system. Log logical issues relate to the behavioural and state characteristics of the system and the way in which object-oriented technology allows more natural mappings from the subject domain into the system domain using the classes and objects mechanisms provided by object-oriented technology. In the session on processing issues, we deal with the temporal aspects of execution and time-related issues. These are represented in the implemented system in terms of threads, processes and the relationships between those, so as to accomplish the behaviour that's described in the logical requirements. As you know in architectural terminology, deployment refers to the location-based issues, so the session on deployment issues describes the physical separation of the system into different parts and describes the mechanisms for organising descriptions of the software and the hardware in physical terms. Software terms being used to describe physical software elements known as components and we'll learn about the use of nodes in design models to identify specific physical hardware elements. External issues are covered in a session of their own and relate to the large-scale separations between the externally perceived interface to the system and the internal implementation of the system across all of the architectural views. More detail is provided on the logical issues in terms of their separation between logical behaviour and logical state in two separate sessions. The behaviour specified in the requirements for the system is implemented using classes and objects which are visible to the users of the system but make use of a variety of other classes and objects internally within the system. The state information perceived by users of the system is either stored internally or using other facilities such as databases which are behind the system and hidden from users usually. The main issues of handling that state information are described in the session on logical state. There is some crossover between the descriptions of behaviour in the state and in the analysis information and the design models. At the analysis level, some attributes are likely to be specified, as if these are to be directly available to the users of the system. Whereas in most object-oriented design models, those attributes are translated into operations which become behavioural representations which hide the internal state. This state is then accessed by the methods of those operations. The session on classification describes the main areas in which object-oriented approaches apply classification schemes to both objects and classes in order to subdivide the complexity of the system into taxonomies of types. Mechanisms for inheritance and relationship between interfaces and implementations is the unique capability that object-oriented technology provides. The task of the designer, then, 
is to specify how those mechanisms within the implementation technology are to be used to satisfy the requirements. At the various points throughout the sessions, your attention will be drawn to the differences between object-oriented approaches and previous technology which provided less rich capabilities in this particular area. Subsequent sessions describe in more detail the techniques and mechanisms used for specifying the system which is to be built in ways which spans many of these different architectural views. In the session on life cycles, you'll learn about the general model by which an object is created, is used and is then destroyed and the ways in which the behaviour at various stages in its life cycle can be specified. We introduce the use of the factory pattern to hide the details of some aspects of the life cycles of an object. In most object-oriented systems, there are large numbers of objects which are communicating with each other and requests to one object are frequently forwarded to other objects for execution. These delegation techniques are described in a session on their own and encompass a wide range of techniques which are frequently seen in object-oriented systems. Models generated by analysis activities and in specifications which result from the design activities contain not only classes and objects, but the relationships between these. In particular, there are a wide variety of relationships which can exist between objects of various classes in the system. While relationships between classes are well supported by the object-oriented software technology, the relationships between objects are poorly supported. While there are a small number of stylized relationships which are specified in some object-oriented designs, you will learn that in reality there are a much wider range of characteristics necessary to properly describe these object-to-object -object relationships. Due to the lack of support for these relationships within OO programming languages, it's common to encounter substantial libraries of classes which are heavily used for this purpose. These collection classes and their various characteristics will be described as the basis for deciding which ones can be used for the types of relationships in the design model. The session on state representation extends the discussion of the storage of state information in attributes of objects. It includes more complex structures in which internal objects are used within a main object to carry not only a variety of different attributes at different stages of the life of an object, but also to partition the behaviour in ways which maps more directly onto the information from state charts, which is likely to have been received from analysis activities. The final session on coupling revisits one of the main objectives of object-oriented systems, which is to achieve low coupling and a high cohesion within the design. The nature of coupling, the direction, the extent in terms of depth and breadth, are described in ways which will help you consider your design choices across all aspects of the system. At all times, it's important to understand that design is not analysis. You will frequently hear the term analysis and design spoken in one breath, but they are very different activities. Unlike analysis, design is a process of synthesizing a description of the system to be constructed from elements that are available within the implementation and in technology techniques. Design involves choices between alternatives and evaluation of the comparative capabilities of those choices. It's also important to remember that this is object-oriented design and not class-oriented design. Much of the information which is gathered from analysis activities and is generated by design activities is likely to relate to classes and the relationships between them. However, when the system is executing, it consists of objects which are communicating with each other using messages which invoke operations and methods which access attributes. All of this execution is occurring on objects. 
even if some of those objects are effectively unique ob objects which represent classes. But let's not worry about that detail just now. In order to facilitate these design activities, you will not be surprised to hear that many design problems are similar to one another. To enable designers to make use of the experience of other designers in solving similar problems, design patterns are used to describe commonly occurring solutions to these commonly occurring design problems. In this module, design patterns will be introduced and the motivation for them described. A variety of design patterns will be referred to as they apply to the different issues, aspects, techniques and mechanisms used and faced in specifying object-oriented systems.